with just elemental forms, we can allow our users to pick different services. They can have different quantities or even just have a singular quantity as well. They can have a grand total price. They can go and click pay with PayPal as well. And by the way, that button won't do anything until they go and fill in the name and email. This is all done with a bit of JavaScripty code. It's really simple and easy to do. And we're just using elemental forms. This is how simple it is, okay? And there are quite a few fields, you know, but if you if you stick at it, you will work through this and understand it, I hope. Well, I know I do. So here we've got an elemental form. We've got name and email. We have an options field. If we click that, it is a checkbox and we have our options, option A, and I've got a dollar sign one. It's quite important that you make sure that you put this to be how you want it to be displayed because it does link into the JavaScript code as well. The label for this is options, it's checkbox, and we have the ID called options as well. We then go to the quantity, which is a number. I've given it a label called quantity. Placeholder, you can see my minimum and maximum values. And if we go to the advanced tab, you can see it's got quantity underscore options. The reason why I've got underscore options is because we have got two sets of quantity fields, just like we got two sets of price fields. If we go to the price, this is just a price field. It's a text because we are going to show the currency dollar pound sign GBP and the ID is price underscore options. Very important again, because we've got two price fields. We need to be able to distinguish between them when we get to the JavaScript code bit. We then have select. This is a copy of the options field. All I've done is change the items in there and I've ensured the ID is called services. We have a quantity copy of what we had before. Uh, so it's got the same values in terms of label and minimum maximum value, but the advanced tab is quantity underscore services. We have the price. This is a text field again, copy of what we had above. But in the advanced tab, it's price underscore services. So I hope you can follow through the logic. And then we have total text field. I've popped in a placeholder of 0.00. .00. It's a text field because we are going to show the currency and I've given it the ID total. So that's all we're doing in the form. If we go to the advanced tab though for the form, there is a bit of styling as well. So this gives a dark color to the total. And down here, we've given a bit of a different grayish color for the price options and the price underscore services. You'll notice the submit button or send for the forms is missing. That's because I've gone and set it to be display none. And if I get rid of this code, the send appears. If you're going to pay with PayPal because you now want them to buy the service rather than just getting an online quote, which we've covered in other videos, you don't want to have the submit button there as well because it gets a little bit confusing. The first bit of HTML that we've now dropped in underneath our form. And sorry if I feel like I'm going through this a bit quick because it kind of makes logical sense when you work through it. We have a bit of script here and this is the script for your PayPal form. It does ensure that you can't hit the send button or anything like that unless the name and email has been populated. So that stops people from paying without completing the details because that could mess things up a little bit for you. So over here, I've stated the email address that the payments will go to. Could be a business account, could be a personal account. And this code will also feed through the total. So when it goes to PayPal, without you having to enter in any API, it will take that over. And it also remembers what options you've selected as well. It's super clever and cool what this does. And if you do want to modify any of this for a particular reason, I would leave it because it works other than changing your email address. Otherwise, I'll get all your payments and I don't intend to refund you for them. Just go and stick this into chat GPT, but I would just make sure you've changed that bit over there. The second bit of code is kind of where the magic happens with these two options. So there's a lot of stuff over here, which is now going to ensure, you know, your fields are feeding through correctly in terms of your quantity services, your quantity options, your prices and all of that. But over here is where it kind of sets. Sorry, I said that a bit wrong. The prices is set over here. So if you've gone and said option A is hyphen dollar one, and that's the description you've got in there, you've got to make sure that when you get here, you put exact same wording. Because if you go and put $100, it won't follow through. You've also got to set your value. So if I had gone and set this to be $10, the return value would be 10. So modify it to work for whatever values you got. 
Here's the one for services. So if you add a third layer for another load of checkbox or select items, go and stick this in over here. And then down here is where it now starts to do the calculation. Now, if you are going to tinker with this, because you're going to have loads of options, take that code, stick it into some AI, explain the differences of what you're doing, and it will work it through for you. And basically, that's it. So that when you now go and view this and you've completed the name and email and you go and pick your options like that, like what I'm doing here. By the way, I've set these all just to be $1 in case I did go and pay it. And then you click it, it's going to take you over to PayPal and allow you to make the payment. But there is one little thing you do have to do, though, even though you've gone and set this up inside of PayPal. And it is actually really simple and easy to do. The important thing is that when you've logged into your PayPal account, as the vendor or the admin on the website. It might look a bit different whether you have got a business account or a personal account. This is just a dummy account that I was using to set up and show you how this works. You need to go and find the option called website preferences. Okay. This is the same wording, whether you're on a business account or not. Normally you got to go and click the settings cog or even go to sellers tool, but it'll either be in there and then you will find website preferences or it will be in seller tools. What you want to do is click on that and you will find an option called auto return. I recommend that if you are doing this and you are going to add PayPal onto a website, I would either set up a separate account because what this will do is now say that every time there is a payment made, it will now auto return. Um, once the payment's made, it will send them over to this page. So if you're using that PayPal account for multiple options, you might not really want to go for this. But the idea is, is that when someone has made a payment, it will now send them over here. And what they recommend you do on that particular page, you want to go and give them a statement to say, thank you for your payment. Your transaction has been done via PayPal, all of that. Make sure you log into PayPal or check your junk or your spam email, et cetera, et cetera, to see the details of the transaction. Because remember, we're not going via WooCommerce where WooCommerce would fire off emails. What they'll now get is an email from PayPal It'll include your email address. It will include what options they picked. So don't worry about that. It's not just going to say you paid $19. It will tell them what options they picked. But you may just want to let them know that, look, you know, um, you've got to go to PayPal because they may be expecting an email from you. That is not a showstopper, in my opinion, because I've tested this out. I And it works. I get an email, the dummy account I set up for the ear customer. They got an email as well. So everything goes through. And once it's gone through, it went and took them to this separate page I went and set up as well. It sends them there. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, waste no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings.